Tonight on Bad Lads Army, you use your fork incorrectly. A lesson in table manners. Oi, 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 come on, keep it going. Therapy for malingerers. Pig is failure, ah. leave in the body. Oh, I'm going. And descent in the ranks. He's a proper, proper wanker. <laughs> Nine days ago, 30 bad lads arrived for a month of 1950s army training and the chance to become potential officers. I mentioned the qualities and attributes of a Queen's Commission officer, did I not? Yes, Sergeant! All these lads have committed crimes, some petty, some serious. Go f*** yourself, Sergeant. But during national service, some working-class lads and even a few Borstal boys became officers. The rain, the rain in Spain stays mainly <laughs> So can this idle, amoral rabble become men of iron and leaders of men? It's a tall order. Stop scratching your nuts, Miller, unless you are trying to masturbate because I'm so good-looking, and I do not doubt your sexuality, so stop playing with yourself. Bloody hell's happened there. Hey, it's all gone, Sergeant. Stand to attention. What do you mean it's all gone? Who's done that? I did, Sergeant. I didn't like my haircut, Sergeant. I don't care whether you like your haircut. You have a military haircut, lad. I thought this was a military haircut, Sergeant. That is not a military haircut. You look like a bloody convict, a prisoner. You look like you've been prepared for the executioner's chair, lad. I feel like a prisoner, Shut up! Sergeant. Shut up! You feel like a what? A prisoner, Sergeant. You look like a prick, lad. You look like a prick. Unlike squaddies, 1950s officers were expected to cultivate a fuller head of hair. And with his conviction for common assault, Rocco Scalercio could do without the skinhead. Gentlemen, keep the noise down. I'm getting prepared for the officer coming in. Keep the noise down. Today, the lads are having a timely series of classes on what makes a good officer. Gentlemen, sit up! Thanks, Henry. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. We should carry on, sir, please. Yes, sir. Sit up! Thank you very much. Top of the agenda, appearance. An officer must be smart, well presented. He must have the right length hair, a bit longer than the soldier. Out you come here, Scalario. <laughs> Out you come. This does not portray the image of what I, as a soldier, would expect of my officer. Comb? Anybody got a comb? Leave the wig on, Scalero. I like it, Sergeant. Why don't you like it? I don't feel right on my head. Get the wig on. I don't want to wear this, Sergeant. Do it for your platoon. Scalario. On or off? Off. On or off? On. In the army, punishment fits the crime. And vanity should be Rocco Scalesio's middle name. It's all rush, rush, rush. I don't like to be rushed, you know. It takes a long time to look this good. I'm a sexy bloke. I just like my boyish good looks. He's a panda. Loves himself. He talks about himself like someone else. And so you call him the rock, or I call him hot rock. He really thinks he is the rock. He's the best. He purely loves himself through and through. There's no one as great as the rock in his eyes. The rock's the man, though, isn't he, at the end of the day? And everyone knows it. What do you mean everyone knows it and you're the man? I don't understand what you're talking about. They look pretty then, yeah? I'll tell you what. Public humiliation was a tried and tested technique in the 1950s army. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen! Does he not look a little more officer? Looks really pretty. Looks really pretty. Take a seat. Leave the wig on. 
and mud it. Give it a trim, give it a funky head. I reckon that's alright, you know. Do you know what you should do? For jokes, you should just give that a Mohican. I think it looks alright, actually. I think it would look proper stupid. No, I, I quite like get, it. Get your comb on it. After their lesson in sartorial elegance, training continues with rifle drill. But Scalercio's mind is not on the job. Scalercio, you have not got a clue, have you? It's this right. weird corporate keeps getting in my eyes. You're like, that's your lunatic. No! And one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Perhaps Wig Boy can do better in the next lesson. A test designed to bring out essential officer qualities. What we're going to do now is again courage and trust. Courage and trust, gentlemen. Do not bottle it. Get a bit of ball. Get a bit of stamina, a bit of belief in yourself. Belief in the people who are directing you. Sit down. Right back. Do not move. The water is freezing and the lads have no idea how big the waves are. But they're expected to trust their superiors and overcome their fear. Ah! Ah! Good lad. Right, no, keep your hands taken. Good lad. The suspense is too much for one of the lads. A weak swimmer, convicted thief, Ben Priestman, wimps out before even reaching the shoreline. Oh, take him off, blindfold off. <laughs> Mug. Muggy little bastard. Muggy little <laughs> wanker. Uh, it oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Sit down. Next up, how will Scalercio fare? Right floor, right with your head in the floor. You can get your head in the floor. Hey, ten seconds, get your head on the floor. Can I just run into the sea? You want to be as wet as the other men, yeah? I just want to throw myself up. Ashamed of himself, Priestman begs for a second chance. What's up? I just bottled it again, didn't I? Right here? Yeah. Why? It's on the mug. Can I just throw myself in the sea and get No, you're not bottling. Watch me. Stand there. You're not bottling this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sit down. Head back on the floor. Head back on the floor. Head on the floor. Head on the floor. Head on the floor. Good lad. And again. Five seconds. And again. And again. Up you get. Up you get. Good lad, get up there. Well done, you can't get fucking do it. By nothing. Come on then, let's go. Get the blame from off. A trial of adversity becomes a bonding moment for the platoon. Well done, you pass. I feel on top of the world. <laughs> Seriously, I can take on 100 men right now. <laughs> Even Scalercio has stopped whinging about his wig. I feel strong anyway. That's just a walk in the park, do you know what I mean? Headdress off, lad. Headdress off. Lunch time. But if the lads think they're off duty, they're sadly mistaken. Impeccable manners. Impeccable. As well as good manners, potential officers must demonstrate integrity. There's zero tolerance for liars and cheats. Scalario, where is your wig? Lost at sea, Sergeant. <laughs> what do you mean, lost at sea? When we done the task thing, it come off in the water. Lost at sea. So where is it? Sergeant Ray knows better. You told me that that wig had been lost at sea. No, I, it, Shut up! It was found as well. You had it on your head when you came back to camp. You are trying to pull a fast one. You are classically trying to take the piss. And I will deal with this later. You lied to me and that will be the first and last time you do it. Bad lad Rocco Scalercio has been caught lying to Sergeant Ray. Now he's going to pay. You shaved off your hair. We yes, put Sergeant. the wig on. Tell lies. We put the bib on. What I see at the moment is a woman in silk. 
You want to be a fool, we will make you look like a fool. If there's any officer potential in this dishonest lad, Sergeant Ray is determined to find it. He's giving Scalercio one last chance to leave his past behind him. Ask my proper staff for permission to enter the training area. Permission to enter... Louder! Permission to enter the training area, Provost Staff. Tell them who you are. I'm Scalercio. What are you? A liar and a fool. What do you want to be? A man of iron, Sergeant, and a leader of men. Louder! A man of iron and a leader of men. Two of my favourite sea creatures on the beach. One is a starfish. Two is the crab. That's it, lad. Starfish! Starfish! Crab! Distribute the weight. Stand up. Keep going. Get in. Get in. The sandbag weighs 60 pounds. 75 pounds when wet. Down! Up! Down! Up! What are you? A man of iron! What are you? A man of iron! What were you? A fool and a liar! What were you? A fool and a liar! Down! Up! Move! Hurry up! Here! Move! Get down here! There's method to this military madness. Sergeant Ray is breaking Scalesio down so he can rebuild him as a better man. Up! And go! Move it! Move it! Move it! Starfish! Starfish! Push! Push! Starfish! Starfish! Hand in! Hand down! Hand down! Hand up! Starfish! Starfish! I just tell you one thing, lad. This has got to be a turning point for you. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. What were you? A liar and a fool. What were you? A liar and a fool. And what are you now? A leader of men and a man of iron. A leader of men and a man of iron. Well, you start acting like one. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. Do you want to be this all your bloody life? No, Sergeant. A bloody liar and a fool. Well, change your ways. Put that in your right hand and throw it as far as you can throw it. Yes, Sergeant. Throw it. Get rid of the liar. Throw it. Go on. I am getting too bloody old for this. Same as very old, though, Sergeant. You're about as old enough to be my son, do you know that? Yes, Sergeant. Scalesio has taken his punishment like a man and is putting on a brave face. I suppose that was, like, fair, you know, it's fair enough. Like, uh, we're, in, we're in the army and we're, like... We, like, should show, like, a good level of discipline and, like, if anyone steps out of line, you know, you've got to be prepared to take a beast in. If you can't do the time, then don't do the crime, you know? But something is weighing on his mind. Like many of the lads, Scalercio's never known his real dad. But in Sergeant Ray, he's found a father figure who wants to help him confront his demons. I need to know what makes my soldiers tick. There's something quite deep in there, and I want to know what it is, because it could hold you back. If I know what it is, then I can sort it out. I can help you. What is it? Speak to me, son, come on. The more I know, the more I can help you get through this. What is it? I got, like, arrested for, like, something that I didn't do. And they said it was, like, indecent assault. They dropped it to common assault, went to court and that about it. Got convicted. OK. And then I had to do, like, a 12-month rehabilitation all that for something I didn't even do. Just, like, really OK, that must be obviously very, very difficult to accept and obviously upsets you. So what are you going to do about this? There's nothing that can be, Sergeant. There is something you can do about it. You can literally put it behind you. Now I know a little bit about what makes you tick. But this issue that you've got, you've got to put it behind you, son, and you've got to be able to move forward. 
and this is an opportunity for you to move forward. You stay there, you two rag. These drums have broken the toughest of men, and you ain't halfway near it. From day one, convicted fraudster Kirk Woodend has struggled. He's unfit. Woodend, get the in it now. Lazy and hasn't been pulling his weight. I can't be with a fat faggot anymore. Gentlemen, there's still attitude in this platoon. One or two of you are letting others down. Now he's been made an example of for constant malingering. These people are the burden to your sections. With an important inspection just round the corner, has he learnt his lesson? Now stand to attention. Soldiers, stop acting like it! Back in the billets, most of the lads get straight to work. Last one on the left. The handle's facing outwards. Edwards. The platoon commander will be arriving in half an hour to inspect their kit. I'm expecting him to pick me up for everything. He's a very angry little man. He's got a big temper. Little man, big temper. Most lads have spent half the night and every spare minute of the day in preparation. But while everyone else knuckles down, Woodend is skiving as usual. So what's the point of putting in all 100% efforts? Make your bed look nice. For him to come in and fall on the floor. Why is I'm just I'm far off this end. Room, room, shut! With minutes to go before the platoon commander arrives, Corporal Thomas makes his final checks. See, down in there, you need to get a polished brush right down under the welts there. Brasses should always also be centre. Look, that's not acceptable. Those mess tins are gopping. One section is almost ready, except for Robertson Miller, that is. They okay. just don't give a damn. Where's all your kit? Why is it not on your bed? Five more minutes and I would have had everything done, Corporal. Okay, tonight you'll have your bed on parade outside the guard room with all the kit. On it. Same detail. They don't know it yet, but Miller and Roberts will really suffer tonight. Shut up! Shut your mouth and look to your front. Understandably, kit inspections were something every national serviceman came to dread. I suppose the most daunting thing was the inspections. You really got ready, and you'd had hardly any time, and you got ready, and you were all great and suddenly... You had laid out your kit the night before, immaculately and had slept with acute discomfort on the floor rather than have to make your bed again. A sort of toffee-nosed jerk of an officer would walk around with this kind of stick and sort of put white gloves he would wear, probably. And he'd be going to the lockers like that, top of the locker, and he'd go... Take his name. Top two sections. Start two sections. Yeah. The big moment has arrived. Sure. Good morning, sir. Morning, Paul Murray. How are you? Thanks, sir. Excellent. Two section ready for your inspection, sir. Brilliant. Let's have a look. Platoon commander Captain Lord Phillips starts in two section. Spin your tie that up, Dave. Look at the centre. Excellent. Your left hand boot doesn't seem to have seen much polish, Dave. As an officer, Captain Lord Phillips doesn't need to raise his voice. He leaves that to his sergeant. Speak to me. Louder! 2272. Louder! 2272-9447. 2262-8904, Private Bedford C, Sergeant! How are we with dust? It's our enemy, Sergeant. And what is on it? Specs of dust, Sergeant. Specs. Might need a new glove, though, son. Captain Lord Phillips seems generally happy with the lad's kit. But Sergeant Ray is less impressed. You want the truth? I've come Let's through this bloody piece. room like a whirlwind. Well, I'd have you, I'd have Miller, and I'd have Roberts outside my office and teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Is your kit ready, Wood No, Why? Because you won't see it having 
Take it out, won't you? Cool, cool. Well, that's not good enough, is it? All right. Sir, thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you carry on, sir. Carry on, please. Sir. Get your locker closed, Bedford. Get back against the locker, Pete. With the officer out of earshot, Corporal Murray is free to speak his mind. He is not a happy man. Good end. Is this your locker? Hey? Why? Why is your kit in shit state? Answer sure, me. Awful. You're not sure? I'll tell you. You're a lazy That's why. Would you agree that he is a lazy Tell it's me, Corporal. Corporal, tell me if he's working for a section. Corporal, no, Corporal. is he? No, no Corporal. Corporal. He's not working for a section, is he? No, no, no Corporal. Corporal. Why is he not working for a section? He's a lazy Corporal. Corporal. Well, I'm going to change that. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal. Corporal. I'm going to fucking change that. Malingering bastard, that's all you are. Straight towards that guard room. Don't you start looking at that gate. That's Annie. Okay. Don't drop Annie. Right? Okay. Turn around, back that way. Where we go? Annie is a World War II artillery shell. She weighs 25 pounds. Quick, Annie. Oh. Arms out straight! Okay, I'm going to call for... Convicted fraudster Kirk Woodend is paying the price for a life spent blagging it. I can make anybody believe what I want to believe. My sister's a military police officer. I took a warrant card, I did my picture, I went to a local car garage in full uniform. He went in and said, I'm in the military, and they gave him the h -bird. I had a car on finance and it was great, not in my name, and it was for free. He had a blue flashing siren on the top of one of his cars. And the traffic did move out the way of him, and in front of him was a police car. So he got pulled up and charged with impersonating a police officer. I usually think to myself, this will be the last time. He'll be different tomorrow. And he ain't never different tomorrow or the next day or the day after. Don't drop it! I'm going to cut you on you asshole! Get down! Smoking when everybody else is working. Walk. 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 Get walking. The other lads have lost sympathy for Woodend. There's only so much you can do for someone. You know, it's down to them at the end of the day to pull their weight. Every time I see him, he's always sitting outside having a fag while people are coming out, like rinsing down their mops or banging their brooms, getting the dust out, and they always seem to be cleaning, and he's always seem to be sitting out there having a fag. Disturbing my morning, who the f do you think you are? Get him up! Oh. Pain is failure, ah. leaving the body! Pain is failure, leaving the body! Take him down to the f guard room and get him out of my skin. Wooden spends a day as the Provo's plaything. Stop titivating about, you f***ing shite. And make sure you move that lot. And don't get a paint on my f***ing side. Or I'll rip your f***ing head off. Sergeant. Don't let me find that you've been f***ing moaning. You will be happy. Smile! Big f***ing smile. You will be happy. Smile! F***ing smile! Big smile! Bigger f***ing smile! Look up! Say I'm happy! I'm happy. I'm happy, Sergeant! I'm happy, Sergeant! I'm happy, 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 Sergeant! I'm happy, 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 Sergeant! After his re-education, Wood ends ready to return to the platoon. Where's his uniform? It's in the garden room, Corporal Murray. In block. Last chance at the OK Corral. Don't let me down. Turn that attention. Face the guard room. Stand by. Quick, back, laugh, back, laugh, back, laugh, back, laugh, back, laugh, back. Come on. Hello, Belendo. The great Belendo has arrived. Welcome back, Udo. Listen, guys, I'm a new man. I'm sorry for the shit I put all of you through, but uh, 
You know, mistakes happen, and I just hope we can all again from there. I just hope we can all forget the last nine days and carry on from there. Cool. Yeah, fair yeah. Yeah. Let's do it, fat boy. I've painted the whole guard room, the whole of it. Uh, I've washed every wall, I've swept, I've moved things. Everyone, no one expected you to come back though, so fair play, you've proved, proved everyone wrong. Not for the first time, Woodend has wormed his way back into the section. But is he for real? Are you staying? Look up there. Bang, imagine you get something shut Good lad. That'll be easier. No, this is the hardest better. week. Yeah, I'll give it a go. If, if something changes, then I'll slide one for you. Yeah, I'll leave for you, yeah. No. Dinner. The highlight of any soldier's day. But potential officers must observe a strict mess etiquette. Okay, what you gotta do with the peas, yeah? Is you gotta get them like that and you gotta mush them down like that, okay? I ain't taking the piss, okay? I'm, I'm serious. And then you gotta push them up into the top of your fork like that. And get them like that. The corporals have been watching their every move. Clearly, good manners and bad lads don't always go hand in hand. Whoops, that's no way to eat your bread. Don't lick your knife. And drinking from a jug is disgusting. Fortunately, Provost Sergeant Weston is on hand to teach these lads a lesson. I'm coming here today because there's a few people that don't know mess etiquette. Groom, you're drunk from a fucking jug. Paige, you left your plate on the table. Kendall, you licked your knife and stole food twice from Dan's, didn't you? <laughs> you is a thief. You is a fucking criminal. In Bedford. You used your fork incorrectly. That is a fucking crime. Dance. Where are you, boy? Sergeant. Why are you fucking here? Who are you fucking hiding from? Hey! What are you fucking doing, Dad? What are you fucking doing? Why are you on this fucking table? Why are you on this fucking table? <laughs> If you eat like a pig, you'll give it a swill. Start eating. The rest of you carry on with your bills. Why are you eating that? I want to hear you make pig noises. Hurry up, get in there. Start making like a fucking bunch of pigs. <laughs> eat it. If that's not fucking empty in ten minutes, you're going to get another lot of gruel. Oh, stuff. What's about it? Don't take your fancy now. I was looking at up. I was looking through the fucking window. It's all fucking edible. Oi, oi, oi. Come on, come on. Keep it going. Are you finding it funny? Are you finding it funny? Shut up. Come on, what's the matter with you? Not even that. Are you? I wanted you to get it off the fucking floor. But my big corporal fucking Dean says that's been a bit too barbaric. You've been too hard on them boys. A stomach-churning punishment, but a vital military lesson. Don't fucking give me no fucking lip. Get in there and eat it. On the battlefield, soldiers can't be faddy about their food. Where you stop for? Most of the lads rise to the challenge. But just when the going gets tough, one lad wants to get going. From the bottom of my heart, more than anything, I would have loved to have made it to the end. But I am just, I am just scared now. I'm at the stage in my life now where I've been broken and I'm going to go home now and choose how I will rebuild my life. Now, whether I choose to rebuild a good life or a bad life, I really don't know at the minute. Death, height, death, height, death, height, death. Malingering Woodend wants out and has asked to see the platoon commander. Go! Hurry up, hurry up! Cut! Death, height, death, height, death, height, death, height, death, height, death. Afternoon, Woodend. Yes, sir. Right, I understand that uh, we're going to have to relieve you from training. How do you feel about that? Mixed emotions at the minute, sir. Mixed emotions. I understand that is the crux of the problem, isn't it, Woodend? Sir. You are something of a jelly when it comes to emotions, is that correct? Yes, sir. A week and a half of a four week course is not a strong performance by any stretch of the imagination. However, you're going to have to go. Come, Murray. Can you march him out and get him off this camp? I don't want him here anymore. We need people with grit, determination and backbone. Thank you very much, Gordon Murray. Sir.
Listen to me, straight down the stairs, well, not yet. Wait for the word of command. You're not fucking out of the gate yet. Stand by. Stop! Yourself in there, when I say go, into that little cell. You know it well. Get your civvies on. Sergeant. Where you go then? Come on, new cell. I'm disappointed. No, uh, not as disappointed as I am. Mad! Stop! Hey! Stop! Hey! Stop! Hey! Stop! What me get? This bad lad's motto: If at first you don't succeed, give up. Kirkwood End returns to Sibby Street. It's nine o'clock in the evening and time for show parade. A daily ritual where those lads who fail inspection get a chance to make amends. <laughs> Miller and Roberts must assemble their beds on the parade square for Corporal Thomas. Right one section, listen in. It pains me, it pains me immensely to have this section on parade at this time of night. This morning, when I carried out an inspection of that billet, Roberts and Miller did not have their beds anywhere near prepared. This should have happened this morning. In between the welts there, you need to apply more polish, Roberts. Do you understand? Cool, Your button stick, the line must run centre. Well, if he wasn't fucking around with Shut up! Would have been. Shut up! Team spirit, you don't blame anything on anyone. Same detail, look at the button stick. Ever so slightly offline. Ever so slightly. Tension the detail. Tension the detail. Once again, nothing less than perfection is acceptable. Place your mug down. Right, listen in. I believe in punishing a section not necessarily individuals. First four men, you four, over here, take the metal mattress off the bed. Get one man in each corner. Next four men, next four men, over here. Schofield, hand your corner over to new man. Yo, get over in his corner. Discipline, stand still. Flick the switch and shut up and stand still. Listen in. When I say go, get around the block. Listen in. Go! Get around the block. Hurry up! Yeah. Hurry up! Get around the block. Get back here. The rest of the section get a physical beasting. But for Miller and Roberts, the punishment is psychological. Body hop the other side. Go! Raise the legs up. Spread your legs open. Hold it. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. Down. On your feet up. What does not happen after section punishment, there is no recriminations. And I'll tell you why. Because in the next week and a half, I am quite confident that many more of you will mock up. And when you mock up, you might be the one standing over there. You get over there, you help them men back in with their kit. Next time I do an inspection, your bed will be ready, Miller, will it not? Yes, Corporal! Your bed will be ready, Roberts, will it not? Yes, Corporal. No, speak like a soldier. Will it be ready? Yes, Corporal. Will it be ready? Yes, Corporal. They're gonna get punished again if you don't start fucking shouting. Will he be ready? Yes, Corporal. Louder, will it be ready? Yes, Corporal. Last chance they're getting punished. Will it be ready? Yes, Corporal! Who's still smiling? Kendall? Good man. Who else is smiling? Me, Corporal. Me, Corporal. Good. Listen in. Orders of the day. 6.15, Revali. 6.30, PT. 7.30, breakfast. And so it goes on. The beasting over, Miller's happy to crack on. <laughs> That's the only time I'm fucking up. <laughs> Not again. But Roberts blames him. Should we go get Roberts? No, let him, let, leave, leave him on his own. Leave him on his own. Can't be fucked with it anymore. 
Even when I fucking come outside doing my fucking bed, Miller's fucking touching my shit. I said to him, leave it alone. Who's to say that his is fucking right? I said, you fucking need to learn to leave my stuff alone. If I want your fucking help, I ask for it. He was all, oh, I don't need to fucking learn anything for you. But I'll tell you something, he does need to learn something. At least to learn to stay the fuck out of my way before he gets my fucking fist in his face. And it ain't fucking over with either. Hothead James Roberts has been in trouble with the police since he was eight years old. But it takes all sorts to make this man's army something national servicemen knew all too well. The other recruits from, from, from all walks of life. Gentle chaps, nasty pieces of work, cocky ones, tearful ones. It was a complete cross-section. I'd never met people like this before in my life. I'd come from a lovely, quiet backwater of civilised people and suddenly you, you're thumped there in the middle of this uh, scum. They were the dregs of humanity. Are you fucking coming from a fucking war, you and, and that was a kind sort of invitation. And I, I couldn't believe these words. If you would have sent me to the Arctic Circle and thrown me in to the sea at minus 40, that was equivalent to the shock I had in the first two weeks in the army. Come near me and my shit again, I'll break your fucking neck. Prick. I swear he's got a screw loose because he just, he's got anger management skills he needs to deal with and I can't be around someone like that. He's a proper, proper wanker. And, you know, when you watch this, dude, you're a proper wanker, and I think loads of people know you're an idiot, and you need to do something about it. I think the guy's a dick, and uh, I've made that quite perfectly clear to everybody, and he's going to end up meeting my bloody right fist, and it's as simple as that, cos I just plan on knocking him on his ass. Outside the billet, a few of the lads are trying to reason with Roberts. You, you two need to fucking yeah. make up. Come on. Yeah, you need Dave, to make up. Seriously, man. Just you need to make up. Leave, leave your bio for you, me. You can't just fucking start calling him fucking names and shit. You know, we're a, we're a section, you push past call him a name. Well, why is he fucking... Oh, we're in shit call him a name. Well, told him I'll break his neck if he touches my shit again, which I will. Well, fucking... So you're threatening him, then? You're threatening him? So we're in the same section, we're supposed to be bonding, and you're threatening him. And we've got a lot to do tonight, mate, so we might as well get in there and get so on with it. So crack on with it then, stop coming out here and fucking all trying right. to rattle my cage again. I'll come out front, all right? You got a lighter with you? Fuck are you two, these big brothers now. Yeah. We are supposed to be big brothers, aren't we? <sighs> Time to leave my fucking shit alone. I'm sure you won't touch it fucking... anymore. I know you fucking won't touch it, because I'll snap his fingers off if he fucking touches it. Who do you think you are? Come in, you fucking start mouthing off and throwing your weight around here, mate. What the fuck, fuck are you off? gonna do? You oh, fuck off. So do something then. So do something then. Listen, mate. I want to do something. I want to fucking stay then. in. All right. Do something. All right. Something. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. After, if you still feel you're like that, when you're going on earlier, I'm fucking going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. It's not worth it. 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 It's In the gym, anger management, 1950s style. Now, do you see what that is? Channel aggression. Grab a seat beside him there. Grab a seat, yeah? Right. You two people now have to put everything in the past behind you. I'm not asking you to, to shake hands and love each other. I'm not asking you to shake hands and become best of mates. Tolerate each other. Get a bit of tolerate, tolerance going there, yeah? Let's shake hands and let's get the rest of this training done, right, Geezer? Yep. Yeah. Wicked. Cool with that. That's what I like to see amongst soldiers, yeah? OK? Good man. Good man. Let's get outside. Now we're going to quickly address the section. Let's go down. Listen in, we're a section, That's right? Good. Let's start bloody working as a section. No more bickering. No more bitching, no more whatever. I don't care who was responsible, who wasn't. I'm not here to point fingers, yeah? From here on in, the past is the past. Let's look to the future as one section, united front. One for all and all for one. All right! Yeah. Right, get it sorted, gents. Good night. Good night. You want to know the real bloody truth behind it? Go on, then. Balls are about to explode. I miss a beer. I'd do anything for a beer. I cut off my right ball at the moment, just like a beer. Yes, rats, 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 Charlie! Right, gentlemen, good morning. Morning, morning, morning sir. sir. Very nice to see you all again. Steady, don't overdo it. The lads are now halfway through their training. 
and it's time to put their teamwork to the ultimate test, the assault course, under the BDI of Commanding Officer Captain Henry Dodds. This is a test of your fitness, but most of all your ability to work as a team. That's what we're looking for today, your teamwork. If you see somebody struggling, get in there and help them. Concentrate your effort. Fire yourselves up. Fire yourselves up. Come on. The corporals G up their men. You get to here and you use a tiered system on those ladders. The 10 seconds you're going for it. Come on, keep it lit. Aggression. Let's go! Go, 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 go! go, 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 go. The lads must carry a dummy filled with sand to simulate an injured man. And a 20 pound ammo box. Keep walking. Get on! Get on! Leadership, courage and stamina. Essential qualities for potential officers. The dummy gets a bit of a rough ride. But amazingly, this rabble of ne'er-do-wells pulled together as a team. They help each other and achieve something that 10 days ago would have been unthinkable. Well done, fellas. That's good. You do listen to what I tell you. Jack and good effort. Good effort. That's what I want from this section. That's what I want. That's what I expect. Good effort, Schofield. Good effort, Kendall. Good effort, everybody. I can't ask for any more than that. Well done, Tate. And you worked as a team. Fucking well done. Thank you, Cook. This is Thank what we fucking want. Hardman. The rest of you is fucking outstanding. Russell, Smith, even getting up there. Remember, at the end of something like that, we would fight as a platoon. We would attack and we would fucking destroy anything in our path. That's what it's about. From. Two, chat, in, right, chat. One, two, three, one. Quick, march, up, right. A major triumph for the lads. But hard military training is taking its toll on these supposed tough nuts. Back in the 50s, young men were used to wearing hard leather shoes. But the footwear of choice for these 21st century chavs is the trainer. And their soft, girly feet are suffering. My left one's fine, but my right one, I've got absolutely everything wrong with it. I've got a bit of athlete's foot, I've got a veruca, I've got a bit of hard skin and about 20 blisters at the moment, so it's not looking good. Right, lads, keep your bed, get it cleared, get your asses on the end of the beds and get your feet on the end of the bed end. Sergeant Ray carries out some essential maintenance. Remember, your feet are the transportation of the British Army and you must make sure that you look after them. This room has the aroma of a constipated weasel. It stinks. Any problems with your feet? Let's have a look at the soles. They seem well worn, do they not? They're very, very worn. Come here. Move the toes open. Really? You! I've got to do it. Because <laughs> I'm bloody ordering you to do it, lad. <laughs> Stop giggling! Oh, God, that's one. Next one. I'm going to go and sterilise my hands in a minute. I've you, Sergeant. Blisters, we will get them. It's a fact of army life. All soldiers suffer them. But at the end of the day, if you don't treat your feet properly and you have further problems as a result of a blister, that is self-inflicted injury. And you will be charged for that. Lad. <laughs> Tickle test. The lads discover that even sergeants have a sense of humour. <laughs> Let's have a look at your tongue, lad. <laughs> get your money and get in the fucking naffy. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! And then you're in bed at 10 o'clock. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! <laughs> <laughs> An evening in the naffy. As a reward for all the lads' hard work, alcohol is served for the first time. Thank you very much. Tonight, the drinks are on Corporal Murray. 
In the past, most of these bad lads have committed crimes whilst under the influence. Now they're behaving like gentlemen. Perhaps there's hope for at least some of them. Scalesio is eager to tell naffy girl Sarah about his exploits. I had to throw it away, like, because like, I'm no longer a fool, I'm now a man of iron, apparently. So I just, like, launched it into the sea with Sergeant Ray. And Roberts is now a model of composure. Is there an emotional side to the bad lad? have a right side of you, mate, and I'm the rest. I'll do anything for anybody. I'll do anything for anybody. The whole family, whether you, you love, like, or hate the person next to you, at the end of the day, you're trained to, no matter how you feel about them, if the situation comes up of basically war or something, then that person, you defend their life to the end. And it's amazing that Corporal Thomas, Corporal Murray can change 30 different guys into what we are now. <laughs> you don't behave yourself, there's no nappy. <laughs> A happy band of brothers. But when things seem too good to be true, they probably are. Time! One, time! Next time on Bad Lad's Army, pain by the bucket load. Is it big belly there or what? Can you hear anything in there? Flower power. I enjoy doing stuff like this. It's artistic. No strong each other. And the lads get in a lather. This is what you call the fucking buddy buddy system. <laughs> <laughs>